Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to insulin, the mechanism of insulin action, how insulin reduces blood glucose, and then we'll finish with a summary. So insulin is a really important hormone in controlling blood glucose. It's a hormone released from the beta cells of the pancreas whenever the blood glucose concentration begins to rise. So after a meal, for example, after a particular sugary meal, glucose or sugars in that meal get digested and the blood glucose concentration goes up. We have to make sure that this blood glucose level is maintained in the right parameters. So the insulin hormone is released from particular cells in the pancreas, which are the beta cells, and the insulin works to bring that blood glucose back down to a normal level. So it's an important aspect of homeostasis. When the insulin is released from the beta cells, it travels in the blood, as all hormones do in the endocrine system, and it attaches to receptors found on the cell surface membrane of almost all cells in the body. So for most tissues, they can respond to the insulin, which is traveling in the blood and leaving the blood to bind to receptors on these cells. And remember, the receptors will be specific and complementary to the insulin hormone. Once the insulin binds to the receptors, it brings about changes inside the cell biochemically, which help to then lower the blood glucose concentration and bring it back down to normal. So once the insulin and its receptor have formed the complex in the membrane, the cell triggers particular activities to happen, and the result of these activities brings down the blood glucose. After the blood glucose concentration has been lowered, the insulin is stopped from being released, and everything goes back down to normal. So at this point, the insulin has done its action, and the blood glucose has gone back down. So now the beta cells are going to stop releasing insulin because there's no need for it. So the insulin goes down until the demand for this goes up again, for example, after the next meal. So this means that this is a good example of negative feedback. If we have a graph with time and glucose concentration, it does oscillate up and down, but it mainly centers around an optimum value. And by using what we've talked about in this slide, if the blood glucose ever goes up above the optimum, insulin gets released and it brings the glucose back down to the optimum. So it's always reversing the change and therefore this is negative feedback. So how does insulin actually bring about these effects? It's a peptide hormone released from the endocrine part of the pancreas, and because it's a peptide hormone, it can't enter the cells on its own. So the insulin has to bind to receptors in the membrane as it's unable to pass through. So the effects have to be mediated through the receptor. So the first step therefore is the binding to the insulin receptor on the cell surface. And this binding activates an enzyme which is attached to the receptor known as tyrosine kinase. So here's the receptor, and there's an enzyme attached to the receptor, or closely linked with it, called tyrosine kinase, which then becomes active once the binding has happened. The purpose of tyrosine kinase is to phosphorylate other enzymes in the cell. So what it does is these other enzymes go from being a state of not having phosphorylation to now being phosphorylated. And this phosphorylation means there's a chemical change in the enzyme. The word phosphorylation basically means adding a phosphate group onto something. So when we add a phosphate group onto these other enzymes, they go from being inactive to active. So just to illustrate that again, insulin binds to its receptor, activating the enzyme tyrosine kinase. And this in turn helps to phosphorylate these other enzymes found in the cell which now means that these are active. So it's kind of a chain of responses through the cell. And then these active enzymes are what are going to bring about the reduction in blood glucose concentration. So these enzymes are now active and they can do various things so that the blood glucose can be brought down. So if you can remember those steps, then you can remember that this is what turns the blood glucose down to its normal level. So how does the blood glucose actually go down? Well, once the insulin is bound to its insulin receptor in a cell, a number of changes take place inside the cell in order to bring the blood glucose back down. So remember, the insulin has bound to its peptide receptor because it can't bind or pass through the cell, and this is going to set off a chain of events. There are vesicles, or membrane spheres, of glucose transporter in the cytoplasm of the cells. And when the insulin binds to its receptor, these begin fusing with the surface membrane. So just to illustrate that here, this is one of those vesicles, and the vesicle 
in its membrane just has these channels as a glucose transporter sitting in the membrane, not really doing anything. So these are glucose transporters. And you can think of them as just a channel for the glucose, which should be at the membrane. So at rest, they're just sitting in the cytoplasm, not doing anything. When the insulin binds, however, to the receptor, then certain changes take place where the vesicles are brought to the surface of the membrane. And now you can see that these transporters have been put into the membrane and they're ready to start working. As well as insulin helping them place themselves into the membrane, it also causes the glucose transporter to change its shape slightly so that it opens up and allows more glucose to move through it into the cell. So at a resting state, it would be closed, but in order to become open, the insulin has to allow this. And at this point, when it's sat in the membrane of the cell, the glucose in the blood is going to pass from the blood through the channel and into the cell, therefore bringing it down in the blood. So we're trying to sort of store it away into these cells using these transporters. So as you can imagine, as more of these transporters are put into the blood, glucose passes through into the cell to be stored or used, and the blood glucose concentration can start going back down. Insulin also has other effects too. It causes more glucose to be used in respiration instead of fats or proteins. So remember, in respiration, we can use a variety of substrates, including fats, proteins, and of course, glucose. And usually we use a mixture of them all, but when insulin is present, it stops the use of proteins and fats being used. So if more glucose is being used in respiration, it's going to keep being pushed into the cell and used and therefore we're bringing the concentration back down again. As well as this, insulin encourages the conversion of glucose into fat and glycogen. So the glucose can be stored in two ways, either as a fat or it's added to long chains of glycogen. But again, ultimately, we're bringing this down in the blood because it's being stored away. So hopefully you can see that with all of these processes happening, working in concert, they all reduce the concentration of glucose in the blood. And even if we're making more glycogen and more fats, the idea is to bring this down because high glucose in the blood can be very harmful. So overall, this is the action of insulin. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.